Okay, so are you ready to apply whatever you have learned about the rules of accounting and accounting principles to actual accounting entries? Let's go. So the first example that we are going to deal with is a business owner deposits $30,000 in the bank as equity. This is one of the very early entries or very early transactions in a business. When a business owner is setting up the business initially, they allocate some money, they invest some money in the business and they have deposited $30,000 in the bank as original equity of the business. Okay. If you remember, I mentioned the key in accounting is to understand the dual impact that every transaction has. So what will be the accounts that will be impacted by this entry? You can clearly see there is an entry in the bank. So basically one account is asset, which is cash. And by the way, in accounting, we use the term cash roughly to also refer to about the money in the bank. Okay. So uh, the first item is cash. What is the other one? Well, actually, you can see that in the example, it's the equity. This initial deposit is made by the owner of the business as equity. So this is a contribution from the owner and it will directly impact the equity of the business. Okay, so we have cash on one side, we have owner's equity on, on the other side. What is happening to cash in this case? Is it increasing or decreasing? Well, because the amount is being deposited, it is increasing. So cash is increasing. What is happening to owner's equity? Is it increasing or decreasing? Well, for the business, it is also increasing because the business had no equity or there was no business. And with this deposit, the business now has equity. So from zero to $30,000, there is an increase in equity. What is the nature of the cash account? Is it an asset, liability, equity, income and expense? By now, I'm sure you know cash is an asset. And what about equity? Well, the name says it, equity is equity, right? So we can see that there is an increase in cash, which is an asset and there is an increase in equity, which is equity. So what did we learn about the rules of accounting? We know that when asset is increased, there is a debit, and when equity is increased, there is a credit. Remember assets and expenses, debit when increased, everything else, credit when increased. So the accounting entry would be debit cash, 30,000, credit owner's equity, 30,000, okay? So this was the first entry, let's go to the next one. Okay, the company buys furniture by paying $10,000 cash. Okay, what are the accounts here? You can see that, you can always see that in the in the example or the statement itself, right? So cash is one, but what is the other one? Furniture, right? So we have furniture and cash. What, what is happening to the furniture? Of course, there is an increase because the company purchased furniture, so company had has more of furniture by an amount of $10,000. So there is an increase. What about cash? Well, this, this time the cash is being paid out. Remember in the previous example, the business owner was paying cash into the business bank account. So that's why there was an increase. But in this case, the company is paying cash. So there is a decrease in cash. Okay, what, are, what is the nature of furniture? It's an asset. What's the nature of cash? It's an asset. So we have an increase in asset, but we also have a decrease in asset. What we learned from the rules of debit and credit Asset increase is debit, as a decrease, asset decrease is credit. So the accounting entry will be debit furniture, 10,000, credit cash, 10,000. You see how the rules are applying and there, are, there is no exception. Let's move on to the next one. The company now buys furniture on credit for $10,000. So the company buys additional furniture. They already purchased for 10,000 and they purchase additional furniture for 10,000, but this time they did not pay cash, they actually purchased it for credit, which means they have some time before which they need to make the payment, right? So it's just furniture coming in, but what is going out? Well, at this point, nothing is going out, but there is now a contractual obligation. There's now a liability for the company. And this should maybe jog your memory a little bit uh, about a principle we discussed which is the accrual principle. So we are not paying cash right now, but we are purchasing, and this needs to be recorded as a liability. So the accounts that will be impacted are again furniture, but the other side is account payable, because whoever we purchase the furniture from is now expecting a payment from us of $10,000. Okay, so the transaction has already happened, the event, that led to that $10,000 of 
amount due has already happened. And what we learned in the definition of liability is a past event resulting in an obligation to pay. So the event has taken place. We have purchased the furniture. This has also resulted in a liability, which is account payable, although we're still not paying cash yet. So what happens to furniture in this case? Of course, there's an increase. What happens to liability or account payable? There is also an increase. And we know when asset increases, there is a debit, but when liability increases, there is a credit. You see how every time there is always a debit and always a credit. So entry would be debit furniture, 10,000, credit accounts payable, 10,000. Let's go to the next example. The company now settles the amount payable for furniture, okay? So naturally, we recorded the liability last time. Now the company has to settle that amount. So there will be another entry at this point. This is a financial transaction. So what are the accounts now being impacted? Well, first there will be the account payable that we recorded previously, that $10,000 that is that was a credit to the account payable. Now it will be reversed, okay? So account payable and the other side of the entry is of course cash because now we are paying out the money, okay? So account payable is now decreasing because in the last entry it increased. Now we are settling it, so it's going back to zero. So it's decreasing. And cash is also decreasing because now we are paying the $10,000. So we know account payable is a liability. Cash is an asset. Liability decreasing is a debit. And asset decreasing is a credit. Remember the rules of debit and credit? So the entry would be account payable debit by $10,000 and cash credit by $10,000. Let's look at another example. The company pays $1,200 in rent for the building, okay? Now, we know one side, because this is again a cash payment, we know one side of the entry is cash. What would be the other side of the entry? It's not account payable because the company has already paid, but this time this is an expense because this is a transaction which is resulting in a decrease in asset, which is cash and we learned from the definition of expenses our expenses are items that decrease an asset and also negatively impact the equity or profits of the company because it's an expense it's a reduction in the profit so one side of the entry is rent expense and the other side is cash is the rent expense increasing or decreasing well in this case the expense is increasing right because there was again let's say the company started from scratch this there was no rent expense so far but now in the first month they have already paid twelve hundred dollars so there is an increase in rent expense and there is a decrease in cash because cash is paid out so this is a good example we know assets and expenses follow the same debit and credit logic right so if there is an increase in expense it's a debit and if there is a decrease in asset it's a credit right so the accounting entry would be rent expense and debit twelve hundred and cash credit $1,200.